The movie opens in a small town in the year 1860. A secluded house in the forest is the home of Florence Taylor and her three children. One stormy night, they have only candles to light their way, as there is no electricity. Florence is in her room with her children when she hears a noise downstairs. When she came downstairs, she sensed someone behind her. She turns around and sees a white cloth moving towards her children's room. Terrified, she runs after it but finds no one there. But when she rushes to her children's room only to find her son gone, her daughter tells her that a black man took him away. She thinks her daughter is trying to frighten her. She hurries downstairs to look for her son. She tells her maid to help her search. Then she hears another noise from her children's room. She runs back upstairs and sees that her daughter is also missing. She panics and ransacks the room. Her maid comes her and says that she can't find the children anywhere. Then Florence notices a white cloth behind her, and she hears a sinister laugh from under it. But when she pulls the cloth, there is no one there. After that, the story fast-forwards three months. We see a woman who is a paranormal investigator. She has a special ability to communicate with spirits. She is helping a man whose son has also disappeared. Florence arrives and begs her for help, but she refuses. Florence is heartbroken by her rejection. Meanwhile, her children are still missing. We meet another woman, Kelly, who is also a paranormal investigator, but with a different approach. She questions Florence about her situation. Florence tells her that three months ago her children vanished, and now she senses a malevolent presence in her house. She calls him the Nursery Man, the name her children gave to the ghost. She didn't believe them at first, but now she is convinced that he took them away. She still hopes that they are alive, because she sometimes hears their laughter mixed with a creepy cackle and her younger daughter's cries. After hearing this, Kelly agrees to help her. The next day, Kelly visits her house to help. And there, Florence has covered all the windows with cloth because she claims to see the ghost in the glass. Kelly removes the cloth from a window, but sees nothing. Here she tells Kelly that this is my husband's ancestral home, and he died few years ago. To locate the children, Kelly asks her where she hears her children's voice the most. Florence points to the children's room, so Kelly takes out a special divining rod that allows her to communicate with the spirits. When Kelly enters the children's room, she feels as if someone slapped her. She calls out, Florence's children, are you here? If so, show me you are present. Suddenly, the ABC blocks fall down, spelling here, confirming the spirit's presence. Just then, Kelly's divining rod heats up and burns her hand. After that, we see Kelly's house, where her son Richard lives with her. She tells him about Florence, explaining that Florence needs her help and asks his son to get some books for her. But Richard hands her a letter from Florence, who says that she can't stand living in that house anymore. It reminds her of her missing children and the horrors that Kelly witnessed. She warns Kelly to drop the case, but Kelly is determined to solve it. A week later, Kelly moves into Florence's house and uncovers the windows. Then she sprinkles holy powder around the children's room to trap any spirits inside. She also hangs bells to alert her to any supernatural movements. Now Kelly reads a book to complete the mirror ritual, which allows her to see into the other world. Standing before the mirror, she stares unblinking at her reflection. Then she spots someone sitting on a chair in the mirror. She also senses Florence's daughter, who has returned to her room after wandering around. But the nurseryman's spirit keeps trying to frighten Kelly, but she stands her ground and she tells him that he can't scare her or harm her. That night, as Kelly sleeps, she hears a child crying from the nursery room. She investigates and finds a creepy doll in swing. The next morning, upon waking up, she notices strange marks on her neck as she looks in the mirror. There are also blocks that spell out the words, I can. After that, she places some coins outside the children's room door to ward off the spirit. Then, she went into a room where she discovered a drawing by the nursery man with the letter A on the back. Later, she receives a letter from her son, who has found an old woman who used to live in Florence's house. Kelly visits the old woman at her son's request. The old woman says that she sensed a ghost in that house and saw him in the mirror many times. She has been haunted by him for seven years. She reveals that the same ghost made her brother vanish, and he was never found. After which... We fled that house for, 
If we had stayed, he surely would have killed me too. When Kelly accidentally drops the nurseryman's drawing, the old woman recognizes it. It was drawn by her missing brother. She says that no one believed him when he tried to warn them about the ghost. Kelly asks the old woman if there is any way to stop the ghost. The old woman says no, and said that seven years ago, a man who lived in the same house came to her for help. His children had also gone missing, and here we learn that the man was Florence's husband named Bernard, but Florence's children disappeared only three months ago. Why did Bernard seek help for his children seven years ago? We will find out later. As Kelly starts to leave, the old woman reveals a shocking thing to Kelly. She says that the ghost first marked her victim, and then he kills her. When Kelly shows her the marked on her neck, the old woman urges her to leave the house as soon as possible. Her life is in danger, but Kelly ignores the old woman and departs. Meanwhile, she goes to see Florence and tells her everything the old woman said. Florence blames herself for not believing her children when they warned her about the ghost. When Kelly asks her how Bernard died, Florence says that the ghost marked him too and he died soon after. She also got the same mark and that's why she left the house. Hearing this, Kelly returns to her house where she asked her son to get some books. They were written by Bernard, who was a university professor. Richard brings a lot of books from Darkwood House. Kelly and Richard spend the night reading the books, but they find nothing useful. Suddenly, Richard feels a hand on his shoulder and flees in terror, while Kelly discovers the real truth when she reads a book written by Bernard. He had lived in the same house since he was a child. The ghost, who was also known as the nurseryman, terrorized him in his childhood. When he grew up and got married, the ghost made his children disappear. He remarried and had two more children. This time, Bernard had prepared to confront the ghost, but he lost his children again. He married Florence, his third wife, and tried to face the ghost once more. But he died before he could. Then Florence's children vanished too. After reading all this, Kelly called Florence and asked her to come home. When Florence arrived, Kelly told her the story about Bernard, and also mentioned that she had gone into the children's bedroom, where the ghost of the sinister nursery man had frightened Kelly. When Kelly described these terrifying events to Florence, she became inconsolable with grief and had to be hospitalized. Afterward, Kelly returns to Florence's house where Richard met her. Later, Richard goes upstairs room and sees the coins that Kelly placed there. Removing one, he suddenly heard the cries of the vanished children. He calls Kelly, and when Kelly came, she see no one, but suddenly the door slams shut and Kelly trap inside. And outside, Richard is made to disappear by the nursery man. When Kelly came out the room and doesn't see Richard there, she runs to the hospital for Florence. Meanwhile, Florence jumps from the hospital window and dies. After seeing Florence dead in the hospital, Kelly returns home and confronts the ghost. Suddenly she hears Richard's voice saying, Break all the windows in the house. When Kaylee breaks all the glasses, she gets her son back, whom she takes back to her home. Afterward, she finds a book that reveals an ancient magic. Kelly reads the method. To free the ghost, his bones must be extracted, sanctified, and buried. She goes back to Florence's house and locates the sign. She finds a skull in the room and tells her son to bring the holy water. As she does, nursery man's spirit appears and knocks her out. During all this, the house catches fire, but Richard manages to get the skull out and buries it. Then he came inside the house and found his mother dead in the children's bedroom. He breaks down in tears. Once his sobs subside, he gently lifts her body and carries it out of the house. In the end, by sacrificing herself, Kelly destroyed the nursery man.